Hi everyone, I'm Antonella Rivera. I work for the Coral Reef Alliance in the Mesoamerican Reef Region as Principal Investigator. And today I want to tell you about the work that's being done to promote sustainable fisheries in the Mar region, which ranges from the tip of the Yucatan Peninsula all the way down to Honduras. So, how are Mar fisheries doing? Well, as many small scale fisheries, fisheries in the Mar are often underassessed. And for the ones that we do have information, we know that many of them are overexploited. And this is often attributed to three general factors. One is weak institutional structures, which also lack financial support, and the top-down management that usually happens in the area, which does not take into consideration the local stakeholders in the decision-making process. Now, today I want to tell you about a specific case study, the Los Micos Coastal Lagoon, which is an NPA located in the Honduran Caribbean. Like the rest of the Mar region, it's very diverse, both culturally and ecologically. In fact, recent studies have said that it's one of the most productive estuaries in the world. And as you've probably guessed, the main income generating activity here is fishing. But what really makes Los Micos unique is that in 2017, they adapted the first ever marine territorial use rights for fishing system in the whole country. So how did this change come about? To better understand it, what we did was carry out interviews with all the local stakeholders. And what they told us was that they employed this type of adaptive co-management where everybody shared in the decision-making process. And they first started using the conventional strategies that were already in place, such as fishing bans. When this wasn't working out, they chose to start increasing patrol and enforcement to see what the result would be. And what they noticed was that most of the overexploitation was coming from fishers outside of the area. And that's why they adopted these locally adapted turfs where the 13 communities that surround the lagoon get preferential access to harvest this area. We also analyzed fishery independent and dependent data from 2017 to 2019 before and after the ban to understand the changes in incomes and landings that were happening. And this is what we found. So with the conventional fishing strategy in most of the country, which is a fishing ban, there was an increase in landings, but it was only a 10%. In 2018, when they decided to increase enforcement and patrols, we see an, an increase of 171%. And then by 2019, when they were doing bans, patrols, and turfs, the increase was of 830%. So what we're seeing is that this mixed strategy is four times more effective than the traditional bans. And this can also be observed in the income that the fishers are perceiving. The income in 2019, when they were employing the mixed strategy, is 50 times higher than that what they got when they were just using bans. So this change has not gone unnoticed by the fishers. In fact, the local fishers association, Vecinos de Marion, has adopted the motto, by fishing sustainably, we ensure the future for the next generation. And when we ask the fishers how they have perceived these changes, this is what they tell us. Buenos días, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Carlos Colón Valerio. Soy de la Comunidad del Triunfo de la Cruz. Y soy el presidente de la Unión de Pescadores del Sector de Tela y soy el fiscal de la empresa asociativa de producción Tonina Blanca de Triunfo de la Cruz. Eh, al respecto de la pregunta que me está haciendo, sí te puedo decir que se ha mejorado, no a un 100%, más o menos en las pescas lagunares, donde se ha tomado más control en las vedas y todo eso, y los compañeros que pescan en esos sectores han visto la, el mejoramiento de la, de la pesca. Eh, al principio hubo malestar por, por las vedas y todo eso, pero ya hoy en día la gente van comprendiendo, los compañeros los que han formado las empresas, entonces ellos ya miran que hay un, un cambio muy productivo y eso es algo que está beneficiando a todas las personas que viven alrededor de la laguna. So if I can leave you with just one message here today is that complex problems such as small scale fisheries require participatory and adaptive solutions. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Thank you.